Hey, this is Down Phoenix, and today I would like to talk about my personal experience using Google Project Stream to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I was fortunate enough to get an invite to test out this new game streaming service from Google, and I want to talk about my experience with it and what the quality of that's been, and I also want to talk about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so stay tuned. First of all, I would like to give a little backstory into my history with streaming video games because this is definitely not my first rodeo. As a matter of fact, if you've been a longtime viewer of my channel, you know that I was a big proponent for the service called OnLive. This was a game streaming service that was all the way back in 2010. This was when this whole concept of being able to stream a video game was considered alien and impossible and it could not be done. But sure enough, it was done, and I demonstrated that in a video review as well as several videos discussing the service in general. If you're curious about it, please take a chance to educate yourself and check out this handy playlist I have up in the corner of the screen so you can watch some of the videos where I discuss the on life service in all kinds of ways and demonstrate how it worked. But it is suffice to say that much has changed since OnLive originally came out back in 2010 since that service has been defunct for more than three years and Sony for the most part has been the only company that offered any kind of game streaming service with PlayStation Now. That being said however Google Project Stream as well as Nvidia's own GeForce Now services are offering to compete against that. That being said, one thing that is a very big concern when it comes to streaming video games is latency. You definitely want the lowest possible latency in order to ensure a high quality experience with the gameplay. You want it to be as indistinguishable as possible compared to playing on a local system. And that is very important. That's what Google Project Stream's aim is. They offer a 1080p 60 frame per second video stream which is much higher than PlayStation Now, which as far as I know is only 720p. Of course, offering a higher resolution stream like this means that having issues with latency is going to be a little more likely. There is certainly more possibility of that because more bandwidth is going to be required in order to output that high quality image. And so it is very important to run it as efficiently as possible in order to negate any kind of negative impact the player might experience. I don't have so as far as my experience my playing this game on Google Project Stream for more than 30 hours, I can confidently say that this experience has been wonderful. It has been a blessing to be able to play a game like this again via a streaming format and have it actually run beautifully. Now just to compare, I had a friend that I just recently played PlayStation Now over at his house and we played some Injustice and a couple of other games through PlayStation Now and It's good. It's a decent service But it doesn't even come close to the overall quality I've had with Google Project Stream The video quality is noticeably subpar compared to Google Project Stream Also, there were some inconsistencies with the frame rate sometimes things felt like they were a little sped up or a little slowed down in order to compensate for any latency issues. Now that could have been his internet service. He doesn't have the same internet provider that I do and there's always factors like that that certainly can come into play. But from my personal experience, I can say confidently that at least with this particular game, Google Project Stream has been excellent. Of course, it's important to know that Assassin's Creed Odyssey isn't the kind of game that requires the absolute fastest response time, but I never felt at any point that there was any delay in the controls. Whenever I pressed the analog stick left or right, it felt very natural. It felt right. It didn't seem like there was any kind of weird dead zone or any kind of delay in that response. And everything was just beautifully smooth as far as the combat and going through the menus and everything like that. So I want to go ahead and hop right on to my experience with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is what I'm really excited to talk about. So that tells you right there that Google Project Stream is excellent because I don't want to really talk about it anymore. I want to talk about the game now. 
So when it comes to the Assassin's Creed series, it's been a little while since I've played any of the games. The last one I played in the series was Assassin's Creed 3, and I was just kind of turned off on the whole thing by then. But I really enjoyed the first Assassin's Creed game, and the second one, of course, is just a flat-out masterpiece. I really love those games, and Brotherhood was pretty dang good, too, although I didn't really understand the whole reason for having a whole trilogy of games revolving around Ezio. But anyways, let's go ahead and fast forward, since I really want to talk about Assassin's Creed Odyssey and just how it really interested me to getting back into the series. The Achilles heel, so to speak, with this game is the fact that it was based on Greek history and mythology. That is what really drew me into this game because I am a nut for this kind of stuff. I really loved exploring the Greek history and mythology. I love the stories, I love the heroes, I love everything about it. And so that was one thing that really interested me with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That on top of the fact that Ubisoft in the past Assassin's Creed games, one thing that they really excel at is the world building, the types of environments that you get to explore in. You really feel like that these areas are real. That even though it's a video game, that these areas actually existed, just like it is displayed in the game. And that is something that really made me excited, made me really want to give this game a chance, because I'm a freak when it comes to that stuff, and I love it. So, let's go ahead and talk about how the game plays. The one very notable thing that hasn't really changed going from the very first Assassin's Creed game to now is the parkour gameplay, the platforming, the climbing, the running around. It's all very flawless and smooth. It always has been since the first game, so why change it? Why fix what's broken? It already plays excellently and you feel really good about it. And this kind of gameplay has been inspiring a lot of other games. Some of our favorite games of recent times, like Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example, have used elements from Assassin's Creed, so why change it when nobody else really has done it better? But outside of that, the gameplay is fundamentally very different from the original games. These aren't really the kinds of games that they used to be now. It's more of an adventure RPG kind of game. There is a lot of stats that you can buff up through various equipment that you can equip, and there's leveling, there's experience points. It's got more in common with The Witcher, for example, than the original Assassin's Creed when it comes to that stuff. And the combat is quite different as well. That, of course, shares more similarities to games like Dark Souls than it does to the original Assassin's Creed. There have been a lot of fundamental changes for the gameplay, and in my opinion, they've all been for the better. When it comes to the combat, for example, it just has a very satisfying and meaty way to play. There are multiple fighting styles that are based on the type of weapons that you use in combat. You can switch up weapons, you have all kinds of special abilities that you can use, and there's just a lot to it, really. There really is a lot to the combat. This is nothing like the combat from the original Assassin's Creed games, where it was almost paint by numbers with the way that you played the games. Everything was based on parrying and doing certain little things, and of course, it helped to influence later games like the Batman Arkham series, as well as Shadow of Mordor. But when Assassin's Creed did it, it always felt just very generic and mathematic. But here, it's not like that at all. It's just very fluid, and it just has a lot of meat to it, a lot of substance to the combat. Now, it's not the best hack and slash game of all time, but the combat is better than it's ever been in any Assassin's Creed game, and I can confidently say that. And of course, the ship combat is excellent. I've never played any of the ship combat before in the previous Assassin's Creed games, so I couldn't tell you what all is different or new versus the other games, but I just love the ship battles. They're really well thought out, and they just, they're just fun to play. And then, of course, when you board the enemy ships, you can kind of fight the enemies off, and it's all really fun. The It is a little weird, the fact that you can hop on an enemy ship and you're just fighting with that ship, 
and then any other ships that might be involved are just kind of like, okay, we're just going to chill and let them have their little fight, and then we'll interject afterwards, you know, being all polite and stuff like that. It is a little weird, but I still really love the ship combat. And, of course, you can also get on your horse and do archery, and you can do all kinds of things like that. There's just a lot to the combat. It's just a lot of fun. And when it comes to RPG elements, I think we can all agree that Ubisoft isn't really known for that stuff, but they do an excellent job here of it in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You have a ton of ways that you can customize your character as far as the different armor pieces, the different weapons that you can do. Um, you have a lot of control over how those stats progress. You can upgrade weapons in all kinds of meaningful ways. And if there's a particular favorite weapon, you can upgrade its level so that it kind of keeps up with some of the later on weapons that you get in the game. And there's just different kinds of abilities that you can have attached to those weapons. Like I said in Twitter, to kind of morph it into your own personal play style. And it's also very important to know that there are three different tech trees that you can develop and progress in as you gain levels. And you can kind of move it around as you see fit as well because you can respec at any time. There's not any kind of penalty or rigidity with the character design. It's not like you have to be super careful with the way you design your character because... If you design it a certain way and it doesn't work out, you can always just redo it. And I really love that flexibility. And in past Assassin's Creed games, choice and conversation really wasn't all that important. But in this game, it's actually highly important. And they give you a big choice at the very beginning of the game to play between a male or female hero. I decided to play as a female Cassandra over the male Alexios just because... From what I've seen of some of the gameplay, the voice acting and things like that, it just seemed like she was more of an interesting character to play and I don't know, I just kind of felt the mood for it. So I decided to play as Cassandra and I don't want to spoil anything but there are some very unique twists depending on the character choice that you make. And that's not to mention the fact that there are certain quests where you have to make important choices and they have consequence later on in the game so... You can have a different experience from your friend playing this game just based on how you decide to make those choices. And when it comes to accomplishing objectives and finding things and everything like that, it's all very different as well from the original Assassin's Creed games as well. There's no longer like a huge checklist of things all over the map that you can do. Not until you actually talk to the right people or explore the right areas do you actually see these kinds of things? The game also gives you a lot of filters with the map so you can filter out unwanted stuff and you can kind of focus on just the story missions or if you want to hunt for treasure, you can kind of like focus on that kind of stuff. There's just a lot of flexibility on that as well and I really appreciate it. I also like that on some of the quests, they give you hints and clues on what to do but it doesn't exactly tell you where to go on the map. And so you kind of had to look for it for yourself. But fortunately, it's not like all cryptic at the same time. So if you want, you can play that way. Or you can have the game just kind of point you directly to the objective as well. The choice is yours. And I think it goes without saying, based on the graphics, the sound, the music of the game, everything is just well presented. The UI is excellent. I'm not a huge fan of mouse cursor UIs in video games, but it's very well done here. And it's just very well done. Everything is well thought out, well presented, and the visual style is very striking. It's It almost has like a fantastical feel, even though they clearly are going for more of a historical take on it. They don't show off fancy things like minotaurs and... Things like that, for example, they don't show Greek gods in the game. Everything is historical in that comparison, but there's just a fantastical element to it all. Uh, the way that the world looks, it feels surreal in a way, even though, like I say, it has that historical basis, and I really enjoy the way it looks. Uh, the music is actually very highly underrated. I love the soundtrack, the subtleness of the tones, but at the same time, whenever the action pumps up, it really gets going, and it just sounds wonderful. Um, it's, it's 
It's just a real shame that this game is going to get snuffed when it comes to end of the year awards and whatnot. I think people really aren't giving this game enough credit when it comes to it at the end of the day. This is easily the best Assassin's Creed game we've had in a long time. I can confidently say that. I know I haven't played several of them, but just from what I've seen, the gameplay, um, just the overall experience, the vibe that people have, it just seems like... Ubisoft kind of gets it. They kind of get what people want in Assassin's Creed games now. They don't want just the parkour gameplay. They want more, and this game definitely delivers. It really delivers, and it just... If you like Zelda Breath of the Wild, you're going to love this game because it feels like an extension of that in a way. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't have some of the more frustrating aspects like breaking equipment and having to eat food and stuff like that, you know. It's just a so lot more fun to play. Time. And, of course, that goes with saying comparing it to watch. Red Dead Redemption 2, which chance. I've also been playing, but, but I'll be honest, you know. I know Red Dead Redemption 2 is a hugely revolutionary do game. Do it does all kinds of really cool things. But I'm just having more fun playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey to be, when it is all said and done. Maybe some of that's due to the bias of my love for the Greek mythology, the love for the parkour gameplay, the huge number of quests and things to do, the interesting characters. And that's not to say that Red Dead doesn't have all those things, but this game doesn't feel like it punishes you either if you don't play it a certain way. It just, I don't know, it feels really good. And of course there is the whole microtransaction thing, because this, yes, this game does have microtransactions. And there are a lot of people saying that this game punishes you for not chipping into microtransactions, and it makes you grind incessantly. That's not been my experience with the game. I have not felt the grind at all. As a matter of fact, as part of the beta for Project Stream, they gave me a thousand Helix credits. I could have did the 50% XP boost if I wanted to, but I wanted to play the game in the purest form possible. And so I did not decide to do that. I decided to play the game just like a simple $60 purchase would have did it. And I've never felt any kind of grind. The level progression has always felt really natural. and. It just felt really good, so when it comes to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I, mean, I haven't beat the game yet, I've still got a long way to go, but I think for over 30 hours of gameplay through Google Project Stream, I'm very satisfied with the way it plays, and I can highly recommend it. If you like these kinds of games, definitely pick it up. Pick this game up, or if you're still skeptical, if you're like me and you haven't played an Assassin's Creed game in a long time and you're kind of burnt out, at least give it a rent at Redbox or something like that. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what this game has to offer. And it's definitely one of my favorite games of this year. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Let me know what you think below. If you have any questions, just drop them down below. But with that, Down Phoenix out.